Welcome to the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may have missed with your hosts, AJ Kuti and Jason Gordon. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. We are the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may not have prepared you for. As always, I'm AJ and sitting across from me, as always, is Jason. Jason, how are you doing today? Doing pretty well, AJ. It's, uh, you know, time the time changed this weekend, so I'm not going to lie, I'm a little off. Oh, well, fortunately, my kids had... Or they have today and tomorrow off, which oh, means nice. I got to sleep in a little. So, um, and by little, I mean, you know, I'm still up. Uh, I, I managed to get to eight. So I was pretty, pretty pleased with that. Yeah, that's uh, eight o'clock. That's pretty solid. Um, yeah. We're, you know, I'm normally considered a victory if I get past seven o'clock. So. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding on that one. Um, do you have a productive weekend? Well, sort of. Um you know, I, I got a little bit done. It's it's one of those grading times where, some you know, when you start to grade, it's more about getting everything organized so you can start grading, mm-hmm. getting a rubric down or getting the sample that you're going to grade from down and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, yeah, I, I'll call it productive. But in the grand scheme of things, did I check a lot of things off the list? No. So, you know, so everybody has those weekends out there. If you're listening, you, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? You, you feel like you've been working hard, but you just can't see the results. Yeah. You, you yeah. What, what about you? you? You work on your uh, PhD stuff? No. Well, I mean, I did a little bit, not as much as I wanted to. We actually, we, it was, it was good enough weather that we can get outside and uh, Saturday, it wasn't raining and we did, we laid pine straw and I, I oh, hate nice. that with a passion. I, there's 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 very little on the list that's above laying pine straw that I detest more. Um, really, why is that so bad for you? It's just a, well because it's not like a little bit. It's like we had we're we're probably we're a little over halfway done, and it was forty bales. Oh wow! Uh, so we still got probably another twenty five to go. Um, and we live up on a hill, so what we're it's kind of a it's a strain on your calves because you're you're walking uphill, um, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's just not fun. That's yeah, something I would. Well, don't you didn't recommend. have to go to the gym. Just think about it like that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, today, interesting. We I was I was talking to you prior to the episode, and, and we we're coming up with some ideas, and you know, I've been looking. I always try to stay up to date when it comes to. Things that you can use, whether it be physical things like tangible items or software or or any kind of apps or whatever that you can use to help you in your successes uh, through college. And for mine, it's more of a doctoral, but you can do the same thing for undergrad and, and master's programs. Mm-hmm. And so I, I pitched the idea of what if we do like a, a, a tech, almost like a tech. It doesn't have to be, like I said, it doesn't have to be specific items uh, in terms of, of, of equipment. It could be apps, it could be software, it could be anything like that. But things that we either used back in the day or can use now uh, that maybe can help students uh, with their time through college. That's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, you and I both know uh, (laughs) these applications that we use, hardware, things like that. When you get your own system down, that's when you're being most productive. So yeah, maybe give them some tips on uh, things that we use. But uh, before we do, another technology thing there. Uh, Check us out on our website, right? That's our platform. So all our past episodes, everything we got going on in terms of future events, things like that. Also on your favorite podcasting app. Again, give us those stars, give us those likes, give us those shares and reach out to us. Let us know if you have a question. Of course, the website's the best way to do that, but you can do that on social media as well. So just anyway, find us, check us out, share us. All that good stuff. Absolutely. Well, a quick question of the day. I, I I would almost be willing to put a bet down on this one. I know the answer to it. Uh, were you a big techie when you were an undergrad? <laughs> uh, no, no. I um I got my first cell phone when I was uh, I want to say late sophomore, almost a junior in college. Yeah, it was late sophomore. So. And, you know, I'm 41, so it just it goes to show you that was probably 2000, uh, 2001. So we, would, uh, we would have been right about the same. I got mine when I was, my first cell phone when I was 16. 
And well, but you remember what those cell phones were capable of? Calling Playing, people. Yeah, calling people and playing Snake. <laughs> that little game yeah. that you ate the thing. That was it. That that was it. That was the extent of everything. So, you know, I didn't have the opportunity to be a techie. And of course we had computers, but the extent to which I used a computer was to surf the internet a little bit, to check my email a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um yeah, I mean, uh, word processing, right? I use Microsoft Word. Of course, yeah. You know, and that was it. That that was the extent of it. You know, I can look back and think the number of assignments on a computer that I had when I was in college, less than 10 yeah. total. Isn't that crazy? I was a big, like, so, you know, the, the, the when you were going through school and you know, especially for, again, me and you, you know, we were in that age of Microsoft just coming out. Mm-hmm. So Windows was just a, a thing, at, you know, kind of younger in our age. Um, and not a whole lot of people had a desktop computer because, mm-hmm. I mean, they were they were expensive back then, too. I mean, they were still oh, like, yeah. they were still getting the technology coming out. And I remember I know Word was a big thing for a lot of students because it was that, that you said the, the word processor. I, for some reason gravitated towards I was big into PowerPoint because yeah. all the you know because you know when you're in middle school and in high school you had to to make these presentations for different things whether it was like a book report or something like that mm-hmm. I always went to PowerPoint I learned it from a very young age uh, I remember doing PowerPoints when I was in middle school wow yeah, yeah. my dad would he would because my dad was the one that he would get a computer for his job because he was a professor so he had to do a lot of writing a lot of research and stuff like that um, and then they would go, they would, and, and even today they would go, you know, out of, out of, uh, uh, the technology would, would fall behind, right. Cause new technology would come up. Uh, it was growing ever so fast. He would get a new computer and I would get his hand me down. So I learned how to deal with a computer at a very young age. I mean, I remember back in the day, you know, having to get on the, the directory, the CD backslash yeah. search menu, um, well, you so. know, that was actually how um, Bill Gates and Paul Allen together, mm-hmm. they got started. Uh, their parents, I think it was Paul Allen's dad, I want to say, had access to a computer because he was a professor and it was early computer programming. And as kids, Paul Allen and, and Bill Gates had the opportunity to play on it, learn learn from it and begin ideating from there about things that they could create with it. And there you go. It, I, I dare say it kicked off a fairly profitable business. Yeah, my my experience did not make me a billionaire. So, yeah, unfortunately, well, I'm, I'm, you, you missed an opportunity. I did. I really did. It was, it was right there for you. You could have been. You could have been the PowerPoint billion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I was going back to the quick question. I was a big techie. Um, I, I mean, Weird. I used a lot of, uh, and part of it was just because. It was interesting to me. Technology was always has always been interesting to me. I think part of it was because of my ADD. I always tried to figure out ways to um, minimize the effects of that. Trying to keep my focus in certain things, mm-hmm. which tended to be it, it come out to the the, the the opposite effect. But you know, it, it it kept my mind engaged, and I always have trying to figure out ways to to Im- implement it in my life to make things a lot easier. Um, a lot of things to, to automate those kind of things. So uh, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing what we come up with for our, our tips and tricks for this one. So let's get into that one. Um, one of the things that you and I spoke about, again, as we were getting the game plan ready for this episode, is when you're dealing with technology, you're dealing with a, a, a pretty wide price range. Mm-hmm. Some people have the means to get the really expensive stuff. Some people don't. So what we were wanting to do is we wanted to kind of give this in, in really three options, like the cheaper option ideas, the mid-range ideas, and then the really that kind of the higher priced ideas um, just to kind of show the gambit of what's out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so starting with the cheaper option ideas, you want to start with it? Yeah. Uh, do you want to start on hardware or software? Either one. Let's just It's just a, a hodgepodge of stuff. Let's just throw it out there. So I think probably one of, you know, and it's, I have a hard time calling this cheap, Mm -hmm. but everybody always has it, uh, your phone. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think most people these days are either buying, you know, one of the higher end smartphones, like a Samsung, like an Apple, like a um, Google phone. 
But if you've already got one, right, you've already laid down that investment or you're doing a financing or whatever, that's your best friend. I mean, the ability to, one, check your email, Mm -hmm. check your learning management system for assignments and stuff. You can do your reading on the thing. I mean, it's probably not awesome for your eyes and stuff like that, but you can certainly do it. Um, You can hook up a Bluetooth keyboard to it. You can enter in your uh, info. You know, you can do a lot of your assignments on it and stuff like that. It's obviously not taking the place of a desktop when it comes to computing power. Just doesn't have enough juice. But can you do a lot of your work? Uh, Can most majors, quite frankly, do almost all of their work on this device? Yes. And, you know, there's a litany of apps and programs that that are going to make your life easier by downloading them on there and not just depending on the desktop computer. So yeah, you got to start with first the thing already in your pocket, your phone. Yeah. That's a prime, I mean, that's a prime example of, of a, what would be, again, you're saying cheaper option, be, mainly because everybody already has one. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. something that you're, it's, it's not an, a secondary item. You're, you're, you're pretty much going to have that. Um, well, I'll, I'll tag along with that then because you're talking about how you can do so many things. So I'll kind of go with the app side of it okay, on the phone because a lot of these things are free or um, very low priced. Probably my main one. And by the way, as we're going through this and we're talking about these apps and we're talking about these products, we're not sponsored by any of these companies. These are giving you true unbiased opinions. These are the things that we've used uh, we're actually using the one I'm about to talk to right now. We use it for our our uh, podcast. Um, I use but it for if they want to sponsor uh, uh, yes, us. Yes, come to us. Yes, please we'll send happy us to. your money. We will talk about you for good or bad. Yeah. We'll talk about you. <laughs> but this is a this is an uh, we're not vested in this by any stretch of the imagination. Hopefully not yet. Uh, maybe one day. But we're giving you a, a very unfiltered opinion. And my first app that I. I, is a go-to for me because I use it, like we said, for the, we use it for the podcast. I use it for my, my doctoral program. I use it for a lot. My wife uses it for her doctoral program too. It's Notion. Yeah. Notion is a database software. If you're a student, it's free. If I remember correctly. If, mm-hmm. you're, if you're a student, it's free. It's also free for faculty as well because you can use this a lot for your class. You can also use it for personal finance. You can use it for personal scheduling. You can do it personal... Um, um, uh, when you're when you're trying to keep up with the stuff to see how well you're doing, like weekly, um, you can keep up with. It. It's a lot of stuff that you can do, and it's very um, integrated with itself. So you can have you know one dashboard page with everything, and then you click on it, and it'll go to your personal stuff, or you click on another link, it'll go to your school stuff. If you click on another thing, it'll go to your work stuff. Um, and, and a lot of layers. I mean, it, it's yes. a database, right? So it just, you can go as deep as you want. And it just creates that one little path down that road that mm-hmm. you can just, you know, go out of. It's very well organized. Yes. And I will say this, it is, there's a bit of a learning curve at the beginning because you're, you're learning how to create these databases and getting them set for what you want them for. So like for me, I have a database specifically for like my references for any research paper that I'm doing. Um, now, what does those pages look like? Like it's typically a template. So I set up a template and it asks me all these questions as I'm reading the article and I can answer them. So it takes a bit of time. It's a little bit of upfront investment in terms of time and just getting to learn how to do it. But they do a really good job also because they have these some of these templates already made. Um, I would say that's that's a huge one for me. Like I, mm-hmm. I, for, I mean, for the better part of coming up on two years in my program, I've lived on Notion. Every single day I go to Notion is the first thing I go to to see what I have to do, what's, what is due, uh, mm-hmm. and what's, what am I going to work on next. Yeah, so that's a big one It's me. compatible across all your devices too. So you got a desktop, you got a laptop, you got a phone, you got an iPad, you can download Notion. It automatically syncs across all of them. And again, it's, it's one of those things. You can take notes in it. It's pretty good for that. Mm-hmm. You can... Uh, you know, organized checklist is pretty good for that. You can set up a calendar in it, whatever, right? So uh, all that organizational stuff built right into together. That's that's couple, pretty cool stuff. A couple other things that you just mentioned because it does connect across devices. It saves across devices. I'm actually, instead of writing like my first, I guess you would say draft, but it's just where I go to first to write my dissertation is on Notion. Because okay. when I go somewhere, if I don't have my laptop, I still have it on my iPad and I have my on my phone. If I don't have my, my laptop or my iPad, I can still write on my phone mm-hmm. because they, they again, they connect um, 
you know, a, across all devices. And so that way I don't have to worry about, well, is, is my word document in my cloud? Do I have access to my cloud right here? It's, it's all there. So that's a beautiful thing to have, um, when you're sitting in either in a line or you got this idea mm-hmm. that comes up, you know, you can, you can put it down and, and rest assured it's going to be there. Yeah. All right. Jump into another one. Yep. So that one's amazing. Probably equal with it. Right. I will say is the whole, uh, the whole Google suite, uh, Google documents, Google sheets. Mm-hmm. Um, those are really the two I use. I, I use Google slides every now and then it's super convenient. I just, Google slides for me doesn't have quite all the functionality I like, but, uh, the sheets is in my mind, it's so much easier to use than Excel and the my the and the documents the google document is just so easy to use once again it's in the cloud you can access it from anywhere on your phone on your other devices but and it makes it so easy to share those documents with others so you can work on them collaboratively for group projects or just you know regardless and you can download it in any format immediately like a, a word document like a uh you know, uh, a PDF, a text file. It just makes life easy in that way. So as far as interconnectivity, keeping your documents up to date and stuff like that, and just generally being organized, doing the old school thing of going to Word, saving it on your computer or on your desktop, right? And then you can't access it unless you have access to that desktop. And then all of a sudden your computer's hard drive goes on the blink and you lose it. Yeah, That is, I mean, Google... Uh, that whole Google cloud system there has solved that problem. So, yep. yeah. Um, so for the writing side, cause again, undergrad there's, there are classes you're going to have to do a lot of writing in. <clears throat> uh, there are two programs, internet based programs, um, that are really good, really helpful. Um, one is called Grammarly. I think we've all heard of that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's another one that's, it's kind of the similar, it's, it's, it's kind of similar. It's called Rightful mm-hmm. and it's a W R I T E F U L L. So there's two L's on the end. Mm-hmm. And both of those are going to be the ones where you're writing in your document, you're out, you're writing in your word process or whatever, where, wherever it may be. And once you get done, you click on it and it scans it for grammar issues, punctuation issues, spelling issues, usage issues, um, those kind of things. And Grammarly does a really good job of that. Um, I can't remember. I, I think there's, uh, there's a fee that goes with it, I believe. Um, <clears throat> rightful kind of is in the same kind of area. Um, but Rightful is more for scholarly, I guess you would say, more academic writing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it makes sure you, you, the, the usage of words, um, you know, one of the things that I had, I had, <clears throat> excuse me. I had a really big problem with when I came into the program. Is I've always been told or taught to I write as I speak. The way I speak is the way I write, and mm. that's a problem because, especially in the South, we kind of we kind of push words together and, and use. You know, but when you're dealing with um, conjunctions, there's no conjunctions in academic writing. And so that was something that I'm, I'm still, even to this day, I'm still struggling to get past because every once in a while I'll throw up an apostrophe S or something like that. And you don't, you don't see that in, in academic writing and it'll catch it. So rightful is really good for that, that academic one. Grammarly is good for those, just, just getting a paper, um, edited to getting it, making sure it, it sounds good. It sounds smooth. I will say some, a tip on that is when you're writing a paper, throw it up on Google and let it read it to you because hearing it. You can actually catch, you know, things quicker than if you were reading it yourself. Because you, when you're reading it yourself, you know what it should be. So you kind of overlook the issues. But when it's read to you, you can catch those things really, really quickly. So that's a, that's that's a, a really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you got any other ones on this one? Yeah. On the lower end side. So <clears throat> I can't really call it cheap. It, it might be in the mid range. Sure. So depending on the size you do. But one thing that I live by as well. So the two I've said, right, the Google, uh, I, the Google platform and, um, you know, obviously the apps and, and Notion. But the one that I use probably more than any of them because it creates a drive on your computer 
keeps everything in the cloud and you can pull it down to any device you're on or just access it to the website is Dropbox. Yeah. Because, you know, there's really not. So I know you can do that in the Google platform as well, right? You can be in Google Drive and upload things. But the thing I like about Dropbox is so much, it acts like a native drive on your computer. It, I don't know, it's just the the usability of it, the ability to share folders, right, and, and see who you're sharing with type thing. I just, I like it a lot. So Dropbox is a huge time saver. You can buy extensive space limits there if you want to. So, you know, I have one that I share with my whole family. So I have two terabytes worth of in the cloud storage because we pull a lot of pictures in there. I share family videos and stuff like that. You start sharing a lot of videos and you don't delete them, right? Uh, Because you want to save them just over time, right? It's going to add up. And these are not things that I would care uh, if the whole world, if a hacker got in there and exposed them to the world. So there's nothing in there that's sensitive in that way. So anyway, uh, Dropbox, I'm a huge fan. Um, Another one that I would, or two really that that work really well. Um, And well, I'll wait on this one because I do think it's going to be, it's more, it's, it's more, um, specific to some of the high end stuff that we're going to talk about. So I'll, I'll wait on that. Um, mm-hmm. because it's just, it, it's associated with that. We're starting uh, to creep up on that mid range yeah, stuff. I, anyway. I think we are too. Uh, but before we leave the cheap option, I think I would be remiss. And we've talked about this and, and, you know, joked around about it, but there is value, um, in chat GPT mm-hmm. and, and, and the AI just in general. Um, there is value. Uh, but when we say that, I, I, you know, there's that, that, we have to put that that point on it where, you know, it's not meant to write the paper for you, mm-hmm. because I've found it's wrong. I mean, it's been wrong before. It's it's I've I've caught it being wrong. I mean, all it really is is pulling summaries. Mm-hmm. It's like an automatic article writer. It's yep. just you're giving it clues, and it continues to learn based upon you know what people are asking for and whether they're satisfied with the answer. So to that extent, you're really just doing this compilation of what you find. So once again, it, you, you depend on the information it's using for reference to be accurate. So until we get to the point that we're just all trusting, right, that's a problem. At least if we do a search for video or we do a search for text, we can look at it, we can read it and say, look, this person looks like they have the credentials or this site looks legit. Uh, so I'm going to trust it to that extent. Maybe I'll look it up on a second site that looks even more legit yeah. <laughs> and just to verify. And then I can be confident that that is accurate. But anybody who's done any level of searching on an internet browser, your Google searches, or looked at a video explaining something across you know, multiple uh videos on the subject, you'll start to see a lot of differences. You'll start and all of a sudden it leaves you wondering, hey, which one's right? Which one's accurate? Yeah. And so you, you really need to go to the authoritative authoritative thing, right? Um so I will say there's two other ones too. If you're if you're doing some kind of research paper where you have to to cite stuff, um there's one that's called illicit.org. That's really good if you have to do a lit review. And it's free. Mm-hmm. All you have to do, it's, again, it's, it's AI. Um, but you ask it a research question, and then it'll pull up as many research articles that it can find that deals with that. And then it'll, that'll allow you to go further into it. So again, you're not relying on it because it doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, it could summarize the paper for you, but it's just giving you the idea of where to go. Here are some other ones that you may not be knowing that's part of a lit review. Um, and then there's another one that's called Genie. Genie. Now, granted, this one is this one probably could fall in the the higher dollar because it does cost. But there's a free version of it. And what you do is you put in a, a PDF of the paper, and it uses machine learning to read it, and then it resummarizes it for you. So again, it's still using one is still using machine learning, and it's not rewriting the paper in new words it's just summarizing it's taking a lot of fluff out of what would be a research paper and there's there's you know a good amount of fluff in there so Mm -hmm. it takes a 25 page paper that you're supposed to be reading or you're supposed to and it breaks it down into maybe like a 10 page paper a little bit more manageable 
gives you the 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 meat meat and potatoes of the of the paper, but not all that other stuff. So um, it's it's a good uh, tool to use as well. Uh, all right, let's go into the mid tier, the mid range mm-hmm. items. Okay, um, to me, first and foremost is having um, a laptop. And I know laptops are probably, you're thinking, okay, high price, but you can get a good, um, Chromebooks are, are fairly inexpensive, relatively speaking to other laptops mm-hmm. and having that portability is, is, is gold. I mean, being yeah. able to take it where you want, if you want to go to a coffee shop and just start writing or you're, like I said, I take my, my laptop when with me, when I go pick up my girls from school, like I'm sitting in line, I might as well start doing something. Um, having that ability is you're, you're not wasting time. And I think that's really key. Um, when you have a lot of down kind of time, if you're, if you're going between like, if you're driving or whatever, um, or you're having to sit in a line, you know, having, having the ability to use that time is, is very important. So to me, having, getting just some kind of cheap laptop would, would work just as long as you can use a word processor on it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to double down on that and say tablet as well. Tablets are just so good now when it comes to just word processing and stuff like that, the ones that come with a keyboard, they're just as good. Yep. And when it comes to surfing the internet, sometimes they're easier. Yeah. Right. So if you're just doing that background research, trying to become familiar, doing some plain typing stuff. Now, when it comes to actually doing things like Excel or something like that, if you find yourself or you're running some bigger program, like you're in a design school and you're running AutoCAD or something like that, you you better have a high end. Yeah. Uh, any type of pad if you're going to run that. But for the most part, most, you know, I I don't think that's something most people are going to run into most of the time. Super, super useful device. Uh, You know, you got the little pen on it so you can take notes as well, scribble, draw, that type of thing. It's one of the huge limitations to the desktop computer. Even the laptops with the touch screens, the fact that you can't draw is easily. Because sometimes it's, Easier just to doodle out a little sketch of what you're mm-hmm. talking about or to do a little I mind know, mapping. Just, yeah. I mean, right. Just to, to scribble around. Yeah. And, you know, for that reason, I always loved pen and paper. Right. And you could translate it later through, you know, you, you do, uh, you know, oh, here's one thing I forgot to tell uh, the people out there. The Dropbox app. The reason I love it so much is because it allows, it's got a built-in document scanner that'll convert anything you take a picture of into a PDF. And it's as good as anyone I've found out there as far as apps go. And it's built right into the Dropbox app. So things like that, right? So anyway, there you go. That's, that's, that's a mid range option. Um, You got another one? I'm going to piggyback on what I was just talking about, how having that portability And, you know, you have these down times where you're having to do something, whether you're sitting in line or you're driving or this one is, it's depending on how you look at it, it's kind of on that threshold of mid to high, but there, there's fortunately a free version. So it can also be the cheap version because it's free, but, uh, Speechify, I've used it before. Mm. Speechify is a, is a, is a, a system where it reads it. It, it turns PDFs and stuff like that into an audiobook. It reads it for you. So mm-hmm. if you're having to read, if you've got an assigned reading, like for me, I, we get assigned readings all the time for, for articles. And if I can't find an audio version of it, so if they gave us a book, I can probably find an audio book. But PDFs, you're not going to find that, especially research articles. So I can use Speechify to read it to me while I'm driving. So I'm still engaged in it. I'm still hearing it. I'm still you know, going through it. Um, but... I'm not just wasting this downtime that I am driving. Mm-hmm. Audiobooks are just the same as well. I mean, I, I'm I, I'm a huge proponent of audiobooks. I mean, I've we've had I think over the summer we had like seven books that we had to have read for our class, mm-hmm. six or seven, and I think all but one or two was on audiobook. So when we took these long trips, I just listened to the audiobook the entire way, and I put it on one and a half speed just to keep going with it, and I was done in one, you know, one leg of the, of the, you know, the, the, on the way up or on the way back. And that helped me a ton because again, it's just, if you're not doing anything other than just driving, it's just wasted time that you could be, you know, that that's going to have to be spent somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would definitely say speechify. Um, the reason I put this in the mid 
range and not the cheap because again, it is free. I get that. It's free. There's a free version of it. I'm somebody who, when I'm listening to an audiobook or I'm listening to something being read to me, if it's in a, I guess you'd say it's in that robot kind of voice. You know what I'm talking about? There's no, there's no natural rhythm to it. Mm -hmm. I can't get it. It doesn't, it doesn't affect me. So the, the premium version of Speechify, which is the one that costs, it has natural reading voices. Oh yeah. And that, that helps me. And it also allows you to go to like one and a half to two, two times the speed. So mm -hmm. um, that would be, that would be another one of mine. So this one has to probably straddle cheap in mid, mm -hmm. uh, but I love the writing software Scrivener. Oh wow. Yeah. Now, now Scrivener is normally for people who are creative writers. Okay. Uh, but I find it great because one, you can get that poster board view just by clicking a button very easily. It kind of creates, you know, so basically you create sub documents and it's a little database, database ish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you create main documents and sub documents and subfolders and all that, but you can change the view and see a cork board view where you're seeing the title of all the things you're writing in and uh, that type of thing. So it makes moving uh, parts of a document around easier. Uh, so for organization purposes and stuff like that, it's amazing for creative writing. So I've never it, heard of it and I'm looking at it right now and it is unreal. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. So I would strongly recommend that. Now the spell check is not strong <laughs> and it's a little clunky on your export. Uh, like how you get it out of there and it saves in native file format. So that's an issue, right? It's, you're going to get issues reading it across computers and stuff like that. So you're really downloading the software to one computer that you use primarily and you're saving it. So it, all those problems that we talked about as to what the Google system uh, avoids, mm -hmm. but when it comes to just sitting down and writing and being able to move stuff around and, uh, it, it's, I love it. I, I, so I write so much in there when I'm organizing. So, yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna have to, to look further into that because I'd never heard of it and it looks, I'm, I'm visual. Like when I'm, when I'm in the writing process, I, it's visual for me to try to, to link things together and having that mm -hmm. kind of cork board feel to it is really, it's, yeah. it's really nice. I um, love it. No, and so. Yeah. I, it's a, it's a, it seems like a good one. Um, all right, well, let's get into the, the, uh, higher end. Mm, now yeah. I'm, I'm one of the, um, I'm, I'm one of the cult followers of Apple. <laughs> yeah, um, me too. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 I'm unashamed of it. Um, but there are certain things I feel like you can do better on a Mac than you can on a PC and, and mm -hmm. vice versa. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not completely jaded. I understand that there's kind of on both sides. And I do think PC is now getting to the point where they're coming up to the same level. Um, so the difference is not as, as wide, but there's just something to me being able to, I, I, I like iPhones, which granted even that's their, their innovation is, is stalled. Um, but to be able to connect my iPhone to my iPad to my MacBook is is very nice. And the seamless so integration is everything. It is. Yeah, it very much so. And being able to write on the iPad and some of the apps that you have on the uh, the, uh, the iPad, I, I for the most part, if I'm not, I use my laptop for the most part as a desktop because I have it connected to my my, my widescreen monitor. Anywhere I'm not at my desk, I'm going to be on my iPad. Mm -hmm. And and you said this before, an iPad is is or tablets right now are just as as strong as most laptops now, which is very true. Yeah. Um, so the higher end of the tablet would be an iPad. The higher end of a laptop would be the MacBook. Um, mm -hmm. Those are really really. I I value those really high in my system in my in my ecosystem of of productivity. Mm -hmm. Um. So I would say to me, that's the first thing that I would have, um, on, on those or, yeah. you know, in this, in this category. I'm the same way. I have Mac desktop. I have Mac laptop. I have 
iPhone, I have iPad, all of them integrated together. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do have a work PC, right? So I use both of them. The 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 Apple system is definitely higher end in terms of cost. And can you replicate that on the PC side? You certainly can. Sure. Um, usually, uh, what I found is the actual hardware does not have as nice a build. Mm -hmm. The battery life, no matter what you get, is never as good. And so those are two things that I just love about Mac. The battery life is so much better and the usability is easier. That's all it is to it if you get used to it. Um, and I've used both for years. So I've I converted from a diehard PC uh, person to a... But as far as cost and things like that, you can get more computing power for a lower cost. Yep. So if you're working on a desktop, that type of thing, almost almost half the cost really um, for the same amount of computing power. But I think the longevity is, is greater on the Apple uh, products. So anyway, that being said, Yes, I'm, I'm with you on that. Now, other things uh, on the high end side, okay? I would just, you know, once you have those things, you pretty much have everything you need unless you are in specialty type programs that require uh, something else. I recently acquired because I do a lot with video files, okay? Have massive, massive video files that go along with my cameras because I'm doing a lot of recording these days in 6K raw files. Um, the, yeah, the recordings I do uh, eat up about eight, gig eight gigabytes per minute. Dang! Yeah, and it gets worse. I could do worse, yeah. right? But eight gigabytes a minute. So if I record uh, a, you know, a 100-minute uh, a, a 100 minute conversation just on a single camera, that's 800 gigabytes, right? That, that will fill up the SSD of most computers. Yeah, my computer be out. And I usually have two cameras going. So you're talking about one and a half terabytes for an hour and a half interview uh, that I'll cut down, right? That I'll trim down. So even while you're trimming it down, you have to import those files. And, and the end result might only be, when I say only, but it might be four or 500 gigabytes, maybe even a terabyte. That is a lot of space. So how do you deal with it? You have to have an external hard drive system. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got a system that has five hard drives, if you know what that is, it's the ones that have traditionally, you hear them kind of crank up and they spin. That's what's in a lot of older or cheaper um, computer, laptop, desktop, whatever. But they're a lot cheaper than your solid state drives, which are the ones that don't spin up, that your SSDs as they call them. So I've got five hard drives mapped together with four SSD drives in a single box that connects to my computer through a very fast port. So I can use the, the, it as an additional drive on my computer. And altogether, even with it rated together, which is just a, a system that means it's it uh, if one of the hard drives goes bad, the data is still saved. So it kind of parses the data among all the hard drives. I've still got a good 50 plus terabytes worth of storage in there, which is, you know, like I said, this is only going to be for people who take tons of pictures in very high resolution formats or take tons of video in very high resolution format. But yes, did, did it cost over, I think it was about $4,500 for that setup? Well, yeah. It did. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's quite expensive. Uh, but if you need it, that's what solves that problem. OK, it, I mean, and it's got all these other functionalities. It creates a home network for you that you can connect multiple computers to. So you basically have a little micro server for your home. So, I mean, yeah. that's exactly what it is. It's a micro server because it has an internal processor and all that. So. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll end it here. I'll, I'll, I'll say my last one here. I don't know if you have another one, but, um, my last one, I'm going to put in the high 
range ideas. However, it's free. Um, Mm -hmm. And I know some people are like, what is that? How is that possible? Because of the amount of time that it would take to invest in this. And time is money. I mean, our time is valuable. So you are investing time. You're you're investing your, your time into this. But I think YouTube is such a valuable asset to have to learn. Like I said, I, I get on there and try to find new things every every so often to see what's out there to help me. Um, it gives you the tutorials. It gives you ideas. Um, it shows you how you can use certain programs and, and software and all this kind of stuff in ways that you didn't know or you didn't think of. Um, it's just a good community of uh, ideas that, that could really, really benefit you. Um, you know, one of the things I would suggest, and this is kind of an honorable mention, um, but your, your ability to automate things in your life. You know, we have 10,000 things happening that we're, we're, we're contemplating, we're having to decide on, or we're having to do or whatever, um, in, in, in a day. And if you can automate those, then you're saving that time to where you're not as stressed. You're not as, as you know, you don't have to, to keep up with as much. Um, those little things can help you so, so much. Um, but the only way a majority of us, including myself, would know to do something like that or know how to do something like that is we have to be taught. And being taught requires time. And so that's why I said this is probably on the higher end just simply because you're, you're having to give up your time. Um, but... I do think it's very, very valuable to be able to go look and see what are things that I can use uh, that will that will help me uh, in certain areas of my life, whether it be mm-hmm. scheduling, time management, um, classes, writing, anything like that. So I, I think that one's a, a huge one. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm 100% on board. The more you can automate, everything's about a system. Mm-hmm. So when you have more to do, uh, we we just know that uh, there's technology out there that's extremely useful. Do you have to learn the technology? Yes. Is there a learning curve? But once you get it integrated into your system, but always seek to improve your system. I add stuff all the time. AJ, you introduced me to Notion. I mean, mm-hmm. I knew of, of it. I'd heard of it, but I never used it. And now I integrate it into my system. Uh, you know, I think I turned you on to uh genie you know yep. uh, or janae or yep. what it, however, however you say it, yeah I, I don't know right now i might have turned you on the scrivener yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm still looking at scrivener uh, stuff <laughs> you know <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff out there that you may not know about as you learn about it, it can be very useful keep an eye out for things that make other people's lives easier if you can integrate them into your system and use it effectively the key thing is to use it yeah if you don't fully learn how to use it and you just let it sit there. It's not going to be terribly useful to you. And, and I've been, I've been guilty of that, right? Uh, signing up for a software and not fully using it. And, and, uh, you know, so <laughs> don't, don't fall into that trap. Don't just buy everything that you think will make your life easy or, uh, or just a, a bit less difficult, I guess, um, just because it exists. Right. Yeah. And uh, use free trials. Yeah. Make sure absolutely. you, make sure you cancel them before the, the time period, but use free trials. I mean, those are, those are prime. I was just looking at Scrivener. They have a 30 day free trial. That's a huge free trial. Usually it's like a week, but mm-hmm. they, they offer one. So, um, did you have any honorable mentions that we didn't uh, to me, the biggest one that we missed and the cheap option was just a classic, you know, pen and notebook. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's crucial. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Honestly, I, I think we we hit all the high points. I mean, there's always going to be useful stuff out there. Yeah. I love the transcription software. I love the little things that will just record your voice, period. Mm-hmm. So you got a quick idea, you can record it down. Um, I lot, love the, you know, I've had several apps that you could scan in things and turn them into PDF for ease of use. Yep. Uh, you, just things like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean... But no, if 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 there's a system that will work for anyone, I have no doubt. If you combine Notion with Google, yeah, and Dropbox uh, together, that is one heck of a system. And they have integrations too. Like you yeah. can actually integrate them. Mm-hmm. 
So it's not like browser. three, it's not even have to be like three different systems. Like you can have one system that's integrated all three of them. Mm -hmm. um, were you a Trapper Keeper person? No. Oh, really? I was, man. God, I love my Trapper Keeper. No, I was. I thought I was, I was high class when I had my Trapper Keeper. Well, see, I always just had, you know, little individual notebooks. I needed I needed one notebook with the course name written on the outside of it. And even in college, I had five legal pads Jeez. every every semester. And each legal pad had a different course on it. And every note I took during that quarter, that semester, uh, was in that legal pad. And if I lost that legal pad, I was in I was in a bad way. But luckily, I never did. And that's, yeah, that's nice. I wish I would have had that kind of organization. I had a trapper <laughs> keeper. I didn't ever take notes. I just wanted a trapper keeper because it looked cool. Um, well, that's that's that's. I love these shows. I love the ones yeah. where we can just kind of go off and see what we can come up with. So, um, you got any parting words before we head out? Hit us up on our website. Give us those likes, give us those shares of, uh, you know, on your favorite podcasting app platform. Check out our old episodes. We got a whole directory. All of this stuff is evergreen, never dies. It's not current event stuff. So it's going to be useful to you whenever, wherever. Recommend it to somebody. Hopefully they can get some use out of it. And if you have any ideas for things that we missed on this show, if you use certain gadgets and gizmos or certain apps or software, let us know too. I, 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 like I said, I'm always learning. I'm always trying to find new things. So love to hear it from, from the listeners. Um, well, we, uh, we enjoyed the show. Uh, we hope yeah. to see you next time. Until then, goodbye. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Reschooled Podcast. Be sure to head over to reschooled.com for news and other information on things we're getting into.